So let's start by uh, an example. Um, so I don't know, is any of you like familiar with OpenStack or do you, uh, yeah, yeah, one, two, three, four, do you know the cloud at least? Yeah, you heard that, the iCloud, all that stuff. Well, so, so we have some other people that's using OpenStack. So there is like a small uh, group in, out of uh, in Switzerland that uh, has like a concept that say uh, they need to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to take the information and treat it and try to understand life. So you probably know the name of that, uh, of that little thing. It's called uh, CERN. Uh, so CERN has been using OpenStack quite a bit. Uh, they've been, uh, they've been using, uh, the, um, they've been using the, uh, all the infrastructure, the internal infrastructure, like to calculate all those large collidon, all those uh, stuff, uh, fancy physics stuff. Uh, they've been using OpenStack for that. Um, and uh, they have around like um, 11,000 physicists like running 35 PB per year, blah, blah, blah. And uh, all of that, they were using all of it on OpenStack. So you might ask, so what's OpenStack then? So what is OpenStack? So OpenStack is, a, so marketing people would say OpenStack is an is a, um, operating system of the cloud. So it's a marketing thing. So basically, like, you have like, three basic resources, like compute, networking, storage. That's what you find like, usually on operating systems. And, uh, and, those ones, uh, and those ones, you're using it like in a very scalable system that's doing like what we call like, infrastructure as a service. So you have like, first of all, you get compute. So what's compute? Uh, compute is, uh, is what you spawn VN with. So when we saw like the, um, the, the presentation that's done about Vagrant, so about uh, those VMs, so take OpenStack in front of it. I would use like VirtualBox if you wanted, but usually you're going to use KVM, Xen, whatever. And uh, it's going to do like management of all those platforms. It's going to schedule and try to see which place to go to, like to uh, to get those VM like working, and see uh, and manage all that stuff. So it's basically will do like you do compute as a service. Uh, so 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 usually like it's hypervisor agnostic. So everything is pluggable. Everything is modular. You can plug everything together, or you can write whatever you want like out of it. Uh, sorry, Ula. Pardon. Sorry. <laughs> So there is, uh, there is as well uh, the networking. So the networking is like it's going to manage like all your network like around data centers. So it can scale like about multi regions So you get like different regions all together, and you can have like all those networking. As long as you have like the networking gears behind, you can have like plugin for it that can manage new network. And you get the storage. Uh, so storage, it's two different pr uh, things in OpenStack. Uh, maybe you've seen it on Amazon. You can know, you know Amazon S3. So Amazon S3 is object storage. Object storage is basically like a CRUD like create, replace, update, delete. So you upload your uh, objects and uh, you can use them. So it does that in a very efficient way and a very uh, scalable way and uh, for very cheap as well. And there's another um, component called Cinder. Cinder is a, is a block storage and a way you can attach for I'm going to go more into it just after. So that's a quick overview. So let, let's see some examples. So what do you want to do like with the cloud? So take for example, like you want to, uh, to have like a three web server with 2DB, blah, 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 and stuff, and uh, things together. So what you do, like you just click like start five, or you just use the API, start five servers, uh, and I want with that kind of resources, like two CPU, four gig of RAM, and uh, when you start it, if you want it, you can pause them, or you can uh, snapshot them as well. A key. Uh, so the networking resource, so usually what you want to do, it's uh, attach uh, IP addresses, or you can say like, I want that public address, public IP, like straight on, the, on that VM. Or you can like do like as well firewalls. So you can do like rules that say like, I want to allow like AD, 403, blah, 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 and stuff. And all of that things like is done in a modular, in a, in a flexible way that would, uh, that would uh, where you, you do that by APIs and, uh, and from uh, whatever, uh, whatever language you want. And uh, you can do like private network and subnets and uh, all those networking stuff that uh, you probably want to do. Uh, and uh, you get the, you get uh, you get block storage. Uh, so that's the thing I was talking about. Block storage, uh, it's the one that attach a volume to a VM. So a volume, what's a volume? It's uh, it's like it's like a hard drive basically. So you get like it's going to show up like as a dev SD whatever on your uh, on your VM. And it's something that you can transpose uh, to uh, another VM as well. So if you want to do some uh, failover or, or you want to use like an HA way, you can uh, just pin up the VM again using like those Puppet Chef uh, thing, but you can still have your data on, uh, on those volumes that's not uh, attached to it. 
so you get, uh, and you can tell like snapshotting obviously. So you can do like those snapshotting of those uh, volume and uh, store them somewhere. And you get object storage. Uh, so the object storage, it's great like for those use cases, uh, for those web developer use cases. So you want like to have a bunch of images that you want to upload like your, all your family pictures there. So usually you, you, uh, you can do that like on your hard drive, exposing by FTP and stuff, but uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, with the object storage, it does that like in a, in a really efficient way that uh, is going to focus only on certain operation uh, that's like get, put, delete. And uh, out of it, it's going to uh, out of it, it's going to uh, it's going to serve it. And for the service provider, uh, it's a really cheap because uh, it runs on community hardware. It doesn't run like on SAN, uh, big hard drive and stuff. You can uh, all the logic of the RAID is based like is directly directly on the on the software. Um, okay, and we get a dashboard as well. That's the pretty face of uh, of OpenStack. Uh, that's the one that we do, like we use for demos. So not a lot of people is going to use it. Uh, I mean, like, like, so people will use it, but like big companies or large companies are going to build like their own control panel. But it's a good way, like, to start and to start experimenting with OpenStack uh, with dashboard. So I would, l I would have loved like to make you a demo out of it, but um, my internet doesn't work here, so I you can take my word for it. It's pretty. Uh, okay, so so we developer what we we usually like. It's cool like to do the click click click, but usually what we want to do we want to automate to automate like all those things, and uh, you want to uh, you want to be able like to talk to uh, to uh, to the services, and that's what cloud is all about. It's like like bunch of API tied together, tied in together that gets uh, that gets um, that gets uh, that gets you like talking to it. So we are using REST. Everything is REST everywhere. So I'm sure you all know familiar with REST. Easy, basically it's like HTTP in API. Uh, so you just uh, use like get, put, delete. Get is for creating. Put is for is for put. Uh, get is for getting. Put is for creating. And uh, delete blah blah blah. Uh, easy as. And uh, but so if you don't want to do pure REST, it's not that easy. Then you can have like Python binding. So Python binding is basically a library. And uh, those, like, it's those Python library are, are used uh, inside OpenStack. They're actually provided by OpenStack officially, all the Python binding. And uh, we, uh, we, we, like, there is other project that's like using SDK for Node.js, Ruby, .NET, Perl, blah, blah, blah. But I'm sure we all love Python and we're going to use like the official uh, Python binding. Um, so one thing I need to mention, why do, I, why do I present OpenStack in a cloud thing? Not because uh, it's just a cool uh, project. It's as well like everything is in Python, no matter what. Like all, uh, all of it, we get like a few CSS, XML5, we get like a few Ruby Puppet module, but uh, we like all of it like is using uh, Python uh, like really extensively. Um, so the project is really active. Uh, we have, uh, it's, it's a really cool project that's been attracted like a lot of people since the beginning. So, so I, uh, I, I actually personally started on uh, OpenStack since literally the beginning. I was working out of uh, Rackspace. And uh, when uh, we got like with the people from NASA to, uh, to start like to uh, contributing to, uh, to the, to, uh, to contributing to a project to each other. So basically what happened is that uh, at that time, we, uh, NASA had a need and, um, and Rackspace had a need. Rackspace had an object storage system and uh, NASA had a compute system, but they both needed like uh, each other's. So they say like, well, but like we just open source everything. Anyway, and uh, so we, so it just like handled like OpenStack like that. So since then, like it took like, like a huge active, like it's just insane. Like for the last three years, it's been like just over three years now. We had like 230 companies that just uh, joined. We get uh, like 1,200 uh, individual member members. We get like for the last six months, there's like 720, 60 reviews uh, like that passed, that uh, went through. And uh, we have like people coming from everywhere and uh, from, uh, from uh, every country really. Uh, we get a bunch of companies that back up that thing. So I'm sure you recognize a few names. And actually that slide is really old <laughs> for the simple reason that there is too many of them. So usually on the website, if you go there, you'll see like there's more than 300 uh, companies that support OpenStack. Uh, okay, so that was uh, the high level overview. <laughs> 
So now we're going to dig uh, into the architecture of the, of the cloud and how does it look like, really. Okay, so that's the, when you look at that, that's the, that's the diagram, that's the high level diagram. So you see like the way stuff communicates. So it looks a bit complicated maybe, probably, but uh, I have more confusing diagrams just after, so don't worry. <laughs> it doesn't seem better. No, really, you'll, see, you'll need to see it after. So, okay, so I'll do that thing. That's going to take all stuff over. So we'll be looking like it's more. So we get like compute. So compute is central. So a lot of people usually, when they think about cloud, uh, they think about like VMs. So VM, like compute is, the, uh, compute is, what, uh, is what we have uh, centrally that talks to, uh, to the image. Uh, and uh, and that, that's, uh, what, uh, that's what we get like to, uh, to spin up uh, VMs on the nodes. I'll uh, go over like more deeply just after, so, so I'll just explain. So we have that project called OpenStack Nova. So he has a code name, like a nice Python code name, and uh, we call it Nova. Uh, Nova. So basically what we have, uh, like so we're going to store like all your flavors of open systems, like Red Hat, SUSE, uh, Windows, Solaris, whatever. And uh, if someone wants to put Solaris there, but uh, you, you'll get like all of those, uh, that's going to list uh, your images. Uh, you get the identity, so, so the image service is called Glance, sorry. And identity is called Keystone. Uh, identity is literally like a, is, is an API that's uh, plugged together a bunch of uh, authentication mechanisms that you can plug like in a very modular way to uh, your LDAP, to your Active Directory, or, or even it has like a local SQLite uh, database that a lot of people is using as well. And uh, it does, uh, and it's the one that ties all the services together to give authorization and authentication and, uh, and give like the right resources to each one. And uh, you get the networking. So the networking, it gives a uh, networking for the VMs. And uh, it's, mostly, it's mostly managing the networking. So it's, it manages uh, the, um, manage, like, the networks like in a VLAN way, in a, in a, all the, I'm not a networking person, so I'm just going to say words. But uh, like VLANs, uh, SDNs, uh, firewalls, blah, 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 and stuff. If you want to talk about networking, that's my colleague over here. He's, uh, he's really good. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, you get block storage. So the block storage is the thing I was explaining just before. It's uh, what manages uh, the block devices uh, and to attach to the VM. And the object storage is what uh, is uh, managing the binaries. And the dashboard. Dashboard tied everything together. And uh, it's using, it's actually a software that consumes OpenStack API. So in, uh, if you want like, to start looking over over like the way the API needs to be used, or that you've been using, like all the binding. Uh, or reason it doesn't use like any private APIs or anything like that, it doesn't have access to the backend, it's using only the public APIs to uh, connect to everything. So that's the overview. So let's take an example, that simple example. We have Alice, web developer, nice girl, she's like happy and stuff, she wants to, uh, uh, she wants to spawn like a Ubuntu server put for an app uh, to do some testing. So what she does, she starts a new server using the Ubuntu 12.04, the one we were seeing like in the image, in the service catalog. And uh, she wants like to attach like to the network called MyNet. So what happened on the back end? What, uh, what happened like behind that, like uh, on the, 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 the thing? So you get the dashboard. Uh, the dashboard, so imagine that uh, she's, connect, she's doing that by the dashboard. So she will click like start server. Um, so what happens, like if she enters a password, like username and password, the username and password would ask that thing like directly to Keystone, to the identity server. Uh, and uh, and uh, she, like, the identity server is going to validate if the, if the username and password like, does all right against the backend. So, so it's usually a SQLite backend or MySQL backend, but it can be like Active Directory or anything. And whenever like she gets to do, uh, to the identity, like she uh, when you get like validate, when you get like the token being like uh, good, good enough, then uh, she's going to co to connect the computer uh, Nova, uh, Nova server. So the Nova server is going to see uh, the request. It's going to go to the image uh, services, going to see if the Ubuntu image is really there, and uh, then the image services is going to get his uh, his real object, like the VM itself, like the image of the VM directly on Swift on the object storage to say, okay, so whenever it get that, the compute like would uh, go to networking and uh, after that would say, uh, would, uh, give you, would give you a network. 
So whenever it's uh, whenever it gets uh, it gets uh, it gets all of it, all the information that it needs, and all the connection endpoints, then uh, the compute <coughs> server will connect on the hypervisor uh, on the local backend. So whatever like what you were using KVM, Xen, usually people are using KVM, and uh, you uh, and they will start the virtual machines until uh, that uh, it's coming back to uh, Alice. And uh, you know, the server is now running and connected to it via SSH. You see, she's very happy. But it would not work here if I was testing because SSH doesn't work. But how does that work? So, so on the so that's that was um, that was like a high level overview. So now it's like, how does uh, everything plugs together? So I'm going to go like focus on the OpenStack compute. So OpenStack compute is the VM. Uh, spawning thing that's uh, managing all the resources and uh, get together the resources. So, 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 let, 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 so, so the, um, sorry. So OpenStack Compute is using, uh, is, is having like different, uh, different demons. So th those are Unix demons that's uh, listening and they have like a different use for different things. So the API, the API services, Nova API, you'll see on the top, that's, uh, the, uh, that's the one that's going to give you an API. So it's going to expose an API. And uh, it, those API can be different things. So we have like the OpenStack APIs, and we have the EC2 APIs as well. So implementing Amazon Web Services uh, EC2. So it provides like different, uh, different APIs. So for now, there's only two of them. And uh, I just thought it was that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, so there is the Nova API. Uh, the Nova API is going to connect uh, to uh, is going to connect to the um, to the Nova compute, uh, and uh, which is what connects uh, to the hypervisor. And uh, after that, we get like Nova console that's going to give you like a VNC. You get Nova conductor that's um, that manage all the database the database access like to uh, to uh, to the database. So the person connection and the different connection that we have. And we get the scheduler. The scheduler is going to determine to uh, know which physical uh, host a VM is going to end up with. Uh, so the daemons is using non-blocking I/O, obviously. That would be that would be a shame if we're using a <laughs> blocking I/O. That would be very, very scalable. Uh, and we're using Eventlet. So I don't know if you know Eventlet. No, it's a Python library that does like that does uh, like uh, non-blocking asynchronous. Uh, a uh, non-blocking asynchronous uh, request, and uh, it's using like grain thread, grain thread, and uh, to get uh, to get that. So it's very scalable and it works really well. So we actually find a lot of bugs into it <laughs> because we're using it like in a very extensive way. But uh, we've been helping uh, we've been helping them like to uh, for patches and stuff. Uh, we have uh, the demons. Like I was saying before, like they maintain like a person state to uh, using an SQL database. And uh, they're using that to use uh, SQL Alchemy. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with SQL Alchemy. So it's an abstract uh, ORM, ORM, and uh, it's what uh, it's what uh, it's what we use to get like different databases like in an easy way. Uh, so most people using for testing will using like SQLite. Uh, a lot of other people will use MySQL, or you can even do uh, do Postgres. But uh, a lot of people is using MySQL. And uh, Galera for uh, for maintaining like a distributed uh, MySQL. Uh, so demons, demons communicate like to each other using RPC uh, over a message queue. Uh, we have uh, we have all the OpenStack services using message queue like to communicate to each other. And uh, so we have an abstraction library called Oslo, Oslo Messaging. That's an abstraction layer that we use for communicating like to different queues. So we have different queues on different systems. So actually Red Hat prefer like to use Cupid. Uh, on Ubuntu they prefer to use RabbitMQ. So yeah, whatever, potato, potato, whatever you want to choose, <laughs> you choose it. Okay, so I'm sure you guys are asleep. So now I'm going to get you awake. <laughs> <laughs> that's the crazy picture. <laughs> I'm not going to go over everything. So I'm going to focus like to uh, the one that we had before, which is the computing. But if you see, like all that stuff is is a complex thing. So it's not like a, it's not like an easy uh, thing to do, like in a, in one way. Yeah, let's, I'm going to take my weekend and just like try OpenStack. So yeah, you can try. It's good. It's uh, there is a lot of documentation, but there is a lot to understand as well. So the good thing as well with trying OpenStack. It's that uh, we got uh, some uh, script called DevStack, which is like 
OpenStack for developer, basically. So you would do like all the Git checkout and everything, and you would, uh, it's actually a shell script. So it's a huge, big shell script that does everything, that can do like that, a lot of uh, options and uh, everything uh, like you can imagine to do with DevStack. And that's actually what we use in, uh, in, our, in our CI. So whenever like, there is a CI, uh, whenever there is a patch, it will run a dev stack with all the functional testing into it and uh, make sure it works. So, so the, the good thing about that is that uh, you can use a dev stack, you can read the shell script, and it would describe you like the way it works, trunk, or the way stuff plug together. Personally, as a developer, that's the way I do. So I like documentation, I read documentation and everything, so there's plenty of documentation everywhere. But uh, reading the shell script makes it really easy. That was my uh, little uh, parentheses. Uh, so let's go back to the earlier example. So when you get like a, when you start like a new computer, you, uh, you, the request come in the Nova API demands. Uh, so in this case, the, the request say like start a new computer, a new compute server. So after that, since the request is for a new VM, then uh, it's going to get queued, queued uh, di directly like to the Nova scheduler. So Nova scheduler is going to uh, know where to go, and we will ask the queue as well to go like to the Nova compute to get uh, the configuration of the systems and, uh, and see if it's possible to get there. So, so when, when, uh, whenever, like, uh, the, whenever the compute services is selected, then uh, it would uh, contact the API and, uh, of the image services. So that's the service uh, catalog. And would start like, to ask for the virtual machine uh, image. Uh, the, so the glance, services, the, the glance services is basically like a registry. So I don't know, like the same thing that we have on now on Linux and uh, on Windows for a long time. Uh, it's, uh, it gives you like a list of stuff, like a key value kind of stuff. Uh, that that goes like from Nova Compute. It, uh, when you guess like uh, you know where the VM is, the Nova Compute is going to talk like to the Quantum server. So the Quantum server. Uh, so Quantum is uh, is the networking uh, networking services. So it used to be called Quantum. So we just change it like to Neutron. Uh, so why? Because uh, those guys from, uh, you know, those guys were making hard drive, they were not happy uh, about us winning, so trademark uh, issues. So we had to change uh, everything, all the trademark, all the code. Code was easy, but uh, updating slides is harder, so didn't do that. <laughs> uh, so, you get, uh, so you get Quantum giving you like a network, and uh, they, give you back, they, they give you back a network together. And uh, that, uh, that Nova Compute knows that that network comes through. And uh, the virtual machine, the virtual machine image is present. Then uh, the networking information is like is confirmed, is obtained, and uh, Nova Compute like is going to uh, is going to start on the hypervisor and going to request a VM. So basically, it's going to talk to KVM, and it's going to use uh, a library called Libvirt. I don't know if you heard about Libvirt. Libvirt is an abstraction library, like kind of SQL alchemy for hypervisor, and uh, which implement like all different stuff. And uh, it would say like start start VM whatever backend you have on a, on, on it, and uh, that's the way uh, that's the way it works like on the backend and uh, and all everything uh, is the, is there. Uh, so so I know it's a bit confusing. I'm sure there is a lot of information. There is uh, so I'm going to go like what is OpenStack as well just to come back a little bit, take a step back. So uh, marketing wise, that's a marketing slide. Eh? Uh, so it's an awesome, te awesome technology uh, platform that's very scalable and uh, pluggable and flexible. So that, that's usually that's my note here. <laughs> but it's purely open. So the good thing, like with OpenStack, is like it's completely an open source thing. So why OpenStack came true? Uh, so as I say before, is that uh, you had Rackspace, you had uh, NASA. Uh, they get together because there was like this big elephant in a room called uh, Amazon, which is huge, uh, huge company that does like really great stuff. But uh, unfortunately, they don't do that in an open source way. So all those company, main reason why there is so much uh, traction for OpenStack is that all those companies started like to get a common uh, enemy kind of thing, especially like all those big guys like Dell, HP, and whatever. So they decided like to collaborate with each other. So it's one of those projects that has like so uh, so uh, that so many. So many people that are uh, enemies, they work together just because Amazon is so big and, uh, and uh, needs to work on that. So he offers that, he, everything is offered like in an open source way, so there's no closed source what, whatsoever. After, but people can uh, use it like to adapt and to, uh, to do whatever they want with it. 
Uh, so, so well, like we we have we, so we have uh, on um, so we have on OpenStack you can do like some customization, uh, but uh, but usually like what you do with uh, OpenStack you can use that as a framework. So you're going to use it like at first like to uh, spin up some VMs, but in a company uh, if you're going to uh, be in a in a in a company that needs like customization, you can do it like pretty easily. So. We can ask you, that would be good, if you can contribute back, if you add new stuff, you know, like just not doing any fork or anything, do it like in a proper open source way, that would be, that would be great. Uh, and uh, you, can, uh, you can do that like in, a, especially like don't do fork, like don't fork OpenStack, because it's a moving target as well. So you want like to do that like in a kind of um, middleware. So everybody's familiar, familiar about Whiskey. WSGI, yeah. So WSGI is awesome, like for Python, is that you can plug middlewares together, you get a pipeline, and you get like middlewares, which you can take that as, a, as plugins, and uh, you can add new stuff into it. So for example, on, uh, on Swift, which is the object server, server, you can add like all different things together. So personally, I work on, uh, on Swift. So m whenever like, there's a client who asks me like some crazy stuff, like we need an anti antivirus, for all the files, for all the objects. So uh, I could just do, like, I didn't have to fork anything. I didn't have to change the code of Swift itself because that would never get upstream anyway. Uh, we, uh, I just add, like, that, uh, that, uh, that middleware that would uh, take the request when you do a post that would do, like, send over a claim AV uh, antivirus, like, in a chunking way, like a different chunk, and after get back the response and say, and say a 501 if it was a virus or a 2 whatever. If it was a, if it was a proper, so it's very flexible using the WSGI and using like all the Python stuff that you've been using before. So you can have, uh, you can have as well, uh, you, you can have a different pluggability like uh, schedulers. So you know, like when I was talking about before, is that uh, you want to uh, be able like to uh, the scheduler is the one that's going to go on the hyper, on the host and going to see if there is resources. But that algorithm that you want to take, like you can tweak it the way you want. So you can. So some people would tweak it uh, if, uh, by power consumption. So do we get like a power, uh, power service that would know like how many power consumption? And they would want like to store like as much as possible on each host. So instead of, uh, instead of uh, winning CPU for the VMs, they want like to win uh, power because power is really expensive in data centers. So there's like tricks like that that you can do with, uh, with uh, the schedulers. And those, those are drivers. They're all drivers and they're all pluggable. And uh, dashboard, dashboard is Django. Dashboard is basically Django. We all know Django, uh, hopefully. But uh, we, uh, those, uh, those one, the, that's really easy. So you get like all those apps. So different services, different apps. And uh, you can plug that or you can get that into your, uh, your, own, uh, your own software. And uh, as I said before, it's easy to try. Uh, you just go on devstack.org, devstack.org. And you, uh, you just get there, you'll see uh, what to do. They get you one command line that you run in a VM uh, that you need to run as a user, not as a root, because just make sure, because a lot of people run as root, and uh, it's actually failing uh, if you run as root. And uh, it's easy to get. So interacting with community. So I got, more I got a little bit more slide like, to explain like, how, to, uh, how to contribute and uh, what to do, uh, how do you, what's the process to contribute and everything. But that's more like an overview, and uh, since, uh, since, yeah, I think I have 15 minutes, so I'm not a question, we'll see. So uh, all development is done in the, in the open. So we, uh, on OpenStack, there is nothing in OpenStack that's, uh, that's not open, so we don't have any private IRC or anything. So we have uh, isopads, which is like uh, our not taking thing. So when we have an OpenStack m uh, meeting, we, uh, we usually do all the conferences and everything over Etherpads or talking and take notes uh, there. We get blueprints, so whenever you want to add a feature, you need to register a blueprint. So to use, a, to use blueprint is a system that's, that's uh, used on Launchpad. I don't know if you know Launchpad. Launchpad is the backend of Canonical, uh, for, uh, that made by Canonical for Ubuntu, <coughs> and that's used like, for different projects. So we use uh, Launchpad for, just for the blueprint and the bugs. Uh, we, uh, so you usually, like, if you want to uh, use a, to put a new feature, you put a blueprint, you get it approved for a cycle. So we get different cycles for, that's roughly match whatever Ubuntu cycle has, not on the dates, but uh, on the really cycle kind of things every six months. 
And, uh, and those one like you get, uh, you, so whenever it gets updated, you get like a code. Uh, so the code is using uh, Garrett. So I don't know if you know Garrett. It's basically like a review interface like to Git. Uh, and whenever it gets reviewed, and uh, you get like people like, that review the, the, the code. So the way it works on OpenStack is that uh, we have a bunch of people can do plus ones, but we have a team by project that, uh, that does, uh, that are core reviewer. And those are the ones, if you get like two plus two, then uh, you get your thing, uh, your thing uh, accepted, and then it gets released directly on the, on the OpenStack. So I'll go over more just after. I get 14 minutes, so hopefully I'll get a bit of time. And uh, you, uh, so you, what we do, like, there's, uh, everything works on IRC. So for me, like most of them are based on, uh, in North America. And uh, so for me, like, I need to stay late to talk about features, which is a bit annoying, but you get lucky. <laughs> so, um, so a lot of it, like, you can talk to them, and everything is done in open. So we have, like, different channels and uh, all slash, uh, sorry, uh, hash OpenStack. And uh, you can connect to it and uh, just talk to them or ask questions. So we get like OpenStack dev for the dev questions and uh, hash OpenStack for the user one. And after you get like all the sub project that has their own channel, like OpenStack Swift, OpenStack Nova, OpenStack uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so every, like I said before, every line of code is reviewed like at least by uh, two people. So you need to have like a plus four. But usually for large project, uh, you, get, uh, much more, uh, you get much more reviewers or get much more interaction and, uh, and uh, iterative reviews. And, uh, and uh, the continuity integration and testing factor is pretty, it's pretty huge. Uh, it, has, it has so many things. Like personally, I've been working in open source for the, since 98 or whatever. I've always been working on open source in, uh, in the companies. And uh, I've never seen like, such, uh, such an efficient way to do, uh, to do like code reviews and, uh, and uh, all they integrate everything together. So I'm not going to go over everything. I'm actually going to talk about it tomorrow at the OpenStack in Action. It's called a conference that my company is organizing. And uh, that goes like over like all the, all the, um, all the, all the features that uh, does in the CI. So you don't have to do coding. If you wanted, if you wanted, you can do documentation, translation, infrastructure as well, and uh, in all of that is a collaborative, so and a very accepting community. So um, I, I, we have something to say. It's like people who've been doing open source uh, since a long time. So I used to uh, contribute to Linux kernels and, uh, and uh, different stuff like that. So I don't know if you've been contributing to those uh, to those projects. Sometimes they can be uh, they can be uh, it can be hard to contribute to it. So people are not very accepting, especially when you run like a bad patch. But uh, I believe, like in OpenStack, it's a very accepting community. So people would help you, like really help you. It's uh, what I like to call it, like the maturity of uh, open source project. Is that people are very welcoming. There's no, uh, there's no arrogant people that would throw you away, and uh, like it's very good for that. So don't feel free, like to collaborate if you want it. Uh, so we have uh, as well like different stuff for uh, community support. Uh, we get uh, Ask OpenStack, which is a Stack Overflow special for OpenStack. We get mailing list. We get a bunch of mailing list uh, where people can uh, can communicate. We get IRC, as I say. We get local user groups, so you can come to the local user groups uh, as well. I'm not sure the one in Montreal is running. Uh, it's a shame. No, it's hard. Uh, and uh, and uh, we have uh, plenty of blogs uh, we, that talks about OpenStack. We get Planet Planet OpenStack as well, which has like so many uh, stuff. Um, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of uh, information everywhere. Uh, we uh, you can uh, you can look uh, you can look over the internet and you just see it. Just um, it just uh, just a bit crazy. Uh, 